<laughs> what are you feeling? <laughs> Do you like it? No, I hate it, man. Okay. Welcome to Food Fears, where I make something you hate taste great. You might recognize my first guest from Breaking Bad, the middle school musical. It's Rhett McLaughlin. Welcome, Rhett. Thanks for having me. I can't say that I'm glad to be here. You probably shouldn't be, and if you had any brains about you, you probably wouldn't be here right now, but since you are, guess what we're eating today? I think you're making a brain pun, so I'm gonna say brains. It was a brain pun. This is a very pun forward event. Is this really necessary? It is, it is. So I'm gonna try and make this as good as possible, but to first really get the pure essence of brain, we need to eat this plain, and I'll even eat it with you as a show of uh, respect and gratitude. Is that raw brain? It's not raw, it's been boiled for safety. It's unseasoned? It is unseasoned, yeah. No salt, no, no pepper. Salt, no pepper. Uh, you seem like you're stalling. Is this human? No, my child brain guy uh, was not available. <laughs> oh, so I had to go to my lamb brain guy. These are lamb oh, brains. Oh, lamb brains, okay, yeah. that makes it okay. Yeah. What, what part of the brain? I think that's actually the medulla and I hate that I know that. This is the language center. That's the language center. <laughs> that's where the lamb gets the ba from the <laughs> ba. Yeah, it's yeah. very, there's not a lot in there. Underdeveloped. Yeah. Underdeveloped. Cheers. Hmm. God. There's a creaminess to it, for sure. Oh, you do have a bucket. Mm hmm. Why are you using it? I think I'm fine. That was for you. <coughs> what are you feeling? <laughs> oh, do you like it? No, I hate it, man. Okay. I couldn't oh, tell. I hate it so I'm much. I'm sorry. God, what? Oh. Ugh. Oh, wow, it really, it really coats your entire mm -hmm. system. So what is it specifically about this that you hate? Uh, well, everything. Okay, good start. The texture, the taste, the idea. I also am of the school of thought that the more um, pivotal and vital the organ, the worse it is to eat. Okay. You think about like a chicken leg. I mean, a chicken can have one leg. I think the chicken might disagree, but I do see where you're coming from. You know from. what I'm saying? Yeah. But a chicken can't have one. Well, chicken's only got one brain. It's <laughs> fair enough. So you're saying the road ahead of me, it's it's pretty big. This is not a chicken leg. This That's is what not I'm a chicken leg. Right. I think I can do it though. I think I have a plan in my head of what I'm gonna do. Uh, you hate literally everything about it, so I might try and change literally everything about it. Okay. So uh, come back in about an hour and uh, love the dish ready, and I think you're gonna love it. Okay. I uh, I trust you. I like you. Uh, but I don't know if I believe you. Now you sound like my mom. All right, so first things first, we gotta get these lamb brains in a brine. We're doing a really simple buttermilk brine. We got our buttermilk here. We're just gonna go salt, pepper, and then vinegar-based hot sauce, something like a Frank's Red Hot, something simple. Gonna whisk that up. Modernist cuisine author Nathan Muirfold, an absolute hero of mine and just a huge name in the culinary world, did really extensive A-B testing on soaking organ meats in milk versus not soaking them and found that there was almost no difference at all. So like a lot of this is really just food myths. And so I'm just gonna cook this like I would chicken. And then we have our beautiful lamb brains and then those are just gonna go straight into the brine, no prep needed. And then these are going to sit in that for 12 hours in the fridge, take it out, and then you're good to go. So a sandwich is only as good as its condiments. I'm a total condiment fiend. So we're gonna make a blue cheese aioli. Every aioli starts with egg yolks that you have to beat up with some sort of acid. We're using vinegar in this case instead of lemon juice, because I think lemon's just a little bit too tart. And so you whip the egg yolks up and then you have to slowly, slowly drip in oil and then it'll gradually emulsify it. And honestly, it's really easy to fail and mess up. So like buying store-bought mayonnaise at home I absolutely support and respect that decision. All right, and so the next step in this recipe, very important, you're gonna go ahead and take off your Fitbit because sometimes you get your Fitbit covered in mayonnaise uh, and that has happened before and that was a gift, so I don't wanna ruin that. Thank you, Granny, for the Fitbit. There are two strategies when you're trying to like really neutralize a funky flavor. You can try and tame it and lean away from it or you can try and lean into it as hard as possible and throw as many other funky flavors at it. So we're throwing a ton of blue cheese. We're getting a bunch of dill in there that's really aggressive. All right, so we got like a nice blue cheese paste. Just gonna add a lot of funk right into that sauce. And then we're gonna dump in some black pepper. People are always like, Josh, ranch or blue cheese? It's like, dude, both, you can just combine them. All right, blue cheese aioli's done. Pickles are super, super classical with Nashville hot chicken. Every place you order it, you get pickles thrown directly on top of the chicken. And I wanted to go with something a little bit sweet, a little bit complex to try and round everything out. So we're actually doing a Moscow mule pickle. And so that's gonna start with ginger beer that we're gonna get reducing. 
I'm just gonna pour it directly into the pot. And then that's gonna come to a boil and you're just gonna reduce that till it's about half the potency. You're gonna take normal hothouse cucumbers and you're gonna put about a teaspoon and a half of salt on there. And then you actually wanna massage it in there because the salt is gonna start to break down the cell walls of the vegetable and it's gonna make them nice and pliable. Also, if you don't want pickles, just like make yourself a cocktail. Cooking's hard, you know? Like take the edge off, you earned it, really. Then in our mason jar, we're gonna put fresh ginger. This is gonna serve as like an aromatic there's a ton of uh, ginger in a Moscow Mule, ditto with lime. And you don't want to get your vodka reducing in there because you actually just want to take it and psych, you're going to pour it directly into your mason jar. Uh, if you get it reducing, you're going to cook all the alcohol out and you want that little bit of bitterness in there. You can tell your cucumbers are ready when you can pick one up and you can fold it in half like this without it snapping. That means that all the water is leached out and it's going to have a super snappy crunch. So go ahead and just shove as many of those in your mason jar as possible. Great. They're nice and packed. And then last step, you need about a quarter cup of vinegar and you're gonna throw that into your reduced ginger beer. You don't want that to reduce with the sugar too much then the acid's gonna really intensify. And then just let these sit for like at least a day or up to, I don't know, two weeks, maybe three months, maybe 35 years. Maybe this is what gets you through the apocalypse. We'll see. I'm going to be Dorito crusting and frying the brains, which I realize is a very common verb for me to Dorito crust. So I'm cooking it very similar to fried chicken where we're buttermilk brining it and then I'm taking the brains and putting them into flour, back into the buttermilk brine, then into dusted up flaming hot Doritos. You add good tasting things to a thing, it becomes a better tasting thing. And then we're deep frying that and then soaking it in lard and Nashville hot spices. Wow, that's a lot. Even I'm impressed. And that's good to go on a sandwich. It's a finished sandwich. Looks like an early Monet, you know? before he really kind of got into just the full expressionist movement. He was just painting from his heart, I think. That's what it is, it's me. It's coming from my heart onto a plate. It's like a morning sunrise. You're like a you know, dog who made friends with a baby goat. When it comes to finally assembling the sandwich, architecture is absolutely key. So you're gonna slather blue cheese aioli on both buns, and then on the bottom bun, you put down slaw, which acts as a base to support the fried lamb's brains that go on top of that. Then you're gonna put pickles on that. And then now, super, super important, you have to flip the top bun super, super dramatically, very, very, very slowly lower it down onto the sandwich. That's how people know it's a dramatic sandwich that deserves respect. Cut to the reveal. Rhett, welcome back, I hope you're hungry. I am, I'd just like to cover up the taste that's in my mouth right now. That's fair enough. So I present to you the Dorito Crusted Nashville Hot Brain Sandwich. What, what, what? So we have Dorito Crusted Lamb's Brains, Blue Cheese Aioli, Sumac Slaw, and then Moscow Mule Pickles. Ooh, wow. Wait, this is, you, cause you know I've been on a hot chicken craze lately. I follow you on Instagram. You don't follow me, but that's cool. Um, uh, well, we can remedy that. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> depends on how this goes. <laughs> Uh, I'm stalling, I'm still stalling. I know you are, you've been stalling uh, this whole time. How, how hot are we talking? There's a little bit of ghost pepper in there, but just enough to tickle your throat, not enough to punch you in the back of the throat, if you know what I'm saying. Would you like to share this with me as we share the raw brain? Or I the, would love to. The boiled brain? And of course, we've got to get a good cross section. I mean, anytime you make a sandwich, you've got to get a little cross section. Oh gosh, what's that juice coming from, the brain? It's probably the brain, that's brain juice. Ugh. So, as you see, we didn't run from the fact that these are brains, there's still a good amount in there, but I think all the flavors should work together. Okay, let's find out. <laughs> I'm having a great time. I don't know how you did this. <laughs> I would think I was eating a hot chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. Aside from the texture, yeah, I'd be like, that chicken gives a little bit more. <laughs> if you ever had a chicken sandwich and you're like, that chicken might be a little bit raw, but I'm gonna power through it, <laughs> which I have, that's exactly what this is. I'm tempted to go in for a second bite. If you don't finish that, I'm finishing okay. it when you leave. Um, the brain quality mm -hmm. is the thing that I don't experience anymore, mm -hmm. which is the thing that I didn't like about brains. My goal was to try and confuse your palate and hit you with so many flavors as possible. So you get the crunch from the Doritos, even you're distracted by sight from the color, and then you get all the heat, that funky blue cheese, a little bit of bitterness from the slaw. So with the bite I just had, there was a little bit of brain sort of that stuck around mm -hmm. for a little bit, you know, and was on its own. 
and there's a little bit of a gaminess to it, but mm -hmm. then I just think, is this squirrel? Yeah. And squirrel's not bad. I'm from no, North Carolina. You'd be happy to everybody, eat a squirrel sandwich. Everybody eats a squirrel. That's what you, when you turn seven, you have to you have to kill and eat your own squirrel. I love that I get to learn about your culture here. Yeah. That's really beautiful. You know what? You did an excellent thing here. I can't say that if presented with this or hot chicken, I would choose this, but if presented with uh, boiled brains or this, I'm gonna choose this every time. That's good enough for me. I'm calling that a success. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching and please come back next week to see if I can make Link fall in love with a bull penis and let me know in the comments what your biggest food fear is.